Okay, buddy, you're there. You're the last dude. Hello, Rick. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi, Sam. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, actually, uh, I've been a, I, I'm a Christian and I've been watching your videos for the past two years now. And actually, I have a metaphysical question about the Trinity. Slowly. I have, I have a metaphysical question about the Trinity. So oh, yeah. when we say that God is a spirit, uh, is and there spirit? are three, yes, God is spirit. So, and the, there are three persons in the Trinity. So how do we distinguish between the three persons and the spirit of God? So how do we draw that line? Because the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, the Spirit is not the Father, and they communicate to one another. So, so when we say Spirit, uh, the, is, there, is it one Spirit? Like when we say one, so is it one Spirit? spirit? means God's nature is Spirit. And John 4.24, what you're quoting to me is John 4.24. It says God is yes. Spirit. It means that His nature is not composite. It's not physical. It's not material like your nature and mine. He is Spirit. Okay. Because what's the context of John 4.24? The context is the Samaritan woman is asking him, where do we worship God, on this mountain or in the temple? And Jesus says, neither on this mountain nor in the temple, for God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. What is his point? You don't need to go to a location to meet God and worship him because God, unlike creation, is not bound to time, space, and place. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, God is there. Why? Because he's spirit, meaning by spirit, God is not a being that needs space and place. God's nature is invisible, immaterial, spaceless, and placeless. That's what he means by spirit. So it's referring to the nature of God. Well, if the nature of the Father is the same nature as the Son and the same nature as the Spirit, their nature is one. That means the three are one spirit in that sense. Because oh, how many natures okay. do they have? It's one nature. So if that one nature is spirit, that the nature of God is spirit, meaning it is not physical, it's not material, it's not composite, it's spaceless, placeless, then there's only one nature of the Father, Son, and Spirit. So that means Father and Son, and Spirit are one spirit in that sense. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, when, yeah, correct. So when we say the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, so is it's, it's, do we like, uh, is it a separate, like, I don't know, I don't know how to, uh, like, I always, I always That's find it difficult. Given to him so that you can know he's not the father and he's not the son. Okay. So, so it's not like, you know, it's a separate spirit, something like that. No, when you say separate spirit, you mean, is he a distinct person? Yes. But is he a separate spirit nature? No, the nature is one. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So why we call him Holy Spirit? Because that's the name given to him. So you know he's not the Father or the Son. Okay. So when we so, say when we say in the Old Testament that we grieve the Spirit, so what does that uh, well, refer it to? Says, it doesn't say we grieve the Spirit. If you misquote, I'm going to come find you in India and smash that guitar over your head. <laughs> it says <laughs> Isaiah sixty three ten. They grieved his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit, that's two, right? Yes. There is his, Yahweh, and the Holy Spirit who belongs to him. So that's two. Yes, correct. That's why we're Trinitarians, because they're not one person. They're more than one person. Yeah, correct, correct. And when you grieve yes. the Holy Spirit, of course you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is a person, meaning he has emotions, he has a mind, he has intellect and will, and can speak and be spoken to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yes, yes, sir. So to answer your question, I help you? Yes, yes, definitely you did. So it's clear, right? What it means that God is spirit in that context? Yes, correct. And even I was going to the translation of NIV and I could see that yes. it's written God is a spirit instead yeah, of his yeah, spirit. Yeah. But in the context, it's not a spirit because there is no spirit like him because even angels are spirits, but they are creatures who have a spiritual shape that needs space. So God is not yes. a spirit like that. Oh, okay, okay, right? got it. Yes, because got it. Heaven is a place that God created, and this place is like earth in that there is space and place, but it's made of a different substance. So angels are creatures created to live in this place that's created called heaven, and they have a spiritual body, whereas we are creatures created to live on earth, and our bodies are from the dust. 
But both dimensions are dimensions that are created, that have time and space and place. God is the only being that is timeless, spaceless, placeless, and he's the only being who is spirit in this sense, that he doesn't need space, he doesn't need place, and doesn't have a body. Angels are spirits in that they're created and they have bodies, but they're spiritual bodies not made of dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. Yes, God is so what Jesus is saying in John 4.20, he's not just saying he's a spirit, because even angels are spirits, Satan is a spirit, demons are a spirit. The mm -hmm. context is clear. He is a special kind of spirit in that because he is omnipresent. He doesn't need space or place and doesn't have a body by nature. Don't worry where you're at, because wherever you're at, he's already there to hear you <clears throat> pray and worship him. Mm -hmm. That's yes. the context, yes. right? Yes, got it. Got it. I made, did I help you understand? Yes, yes, definitely you did. Thank you so much, sir. So was that your only question?